Well, hey there, everybody. It's your best friend and cool guy, Mr. Samuel Streamer, here with, you guessed it, even more... <laughs> even more RimWorld. Before we begin, a couple of things to talk about today. A, uh, I'm going to say a big shout out to the 196 subreddit. Officially my... Well, I was going to say officially my favorite Reddit. You know what? No. They're my favorite online community going. One of my tweets was on there. Got like 20,000 upvotes. Everybody was saying really nice things about me. So you know what? That's not the reason why I think it's my favorite. Uh, but it definitely helps. So you know what? Favorite community online. As including Discord. Definitely in the comment section. You know what? Sub the patrons too. You're all done for. I should, I should probably clarify I don't know anything about this subreddit. I hope they're not some sort of, you know, like, racist organization. Otherwise, this is going to be, this is going to reflect on me very badly. And the second piece of very quick, big, important news is I've been speaking to, and this is almost heretical to say, an editor. Now, don't panic. I will not surrender RimWorld to anybody. This is this is mine. But I have floated the idea of getting an anonymous editor on, and they've asked me anonymous, on the channel to edit a second series to go on the main channel. The main channel is for all my edited content. The second channel is for all my garbage, that uh, other games I play that you can go watch. And then the third channel doesn't exist. That's a myth. Oh, and then there's the Elise and Sam channel, where me and Elise, that's my fiance. We sit around and we drink tea and we talk about memes and scream at one another. That's a lot of fun. You're going to have a look at that one. Uh, I just thought it was worth mentioning that there might be some other content on on the main channel, so don't be surprised if and when that happens. Wow. Now back to the important reward at hand. Yesterday, a giant rabbit delivered thousands of gold to us. You're right, I don't know what's going on either. Oh, well, I mean, there's that, and I also recruited a ton of little dragon girl for the purposes of sending her to go and be the companion to a, uh, a, a crippled old lady in a field that I abandoned there. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to add her in. Currently, uh, Avius, uh, Aviliusopoly, well, that's really hard to say. Good job. Currently, Aviliusopoly will produce 330 silver in 8 days, 15 hours with a cumulative social skill of 11. That's really impressive, all those numbers. What if we add in the Dragon Girl? Boom. 26. 780 silver in 8 days, 15 hours. And again, to clarify, this is all going to pay for new recruits because of the Empire, in base game mode, because by the way, this is the Empire experience, they get as many troops as they bloody like. If you raid their base and don't finish them off and then go away and come back, they'll get all their troops back. So to that avail, we have, of course, Rimdeed. Now, a lot of people were saying in the comments yesterday, don't forget to check Rimdeed fairly often, assuming we've got enough silver to actually pay for someone. But we pay 502 silver for an applicant, then we get to decide whether or not we want to hire that person permanently. And uh, Then there's like the gold package. But as far as I know that the gold package with the VIP applicants, though it costs 4,000 silver just to get it, you get five applicants which are very, very good VIPs. So that's the goal. The goal is gold. Well, the gold is gold applicants. We've already got gold in the form of a gigantic rabbit. How much gold did you deliver, gigantic rabbit? Oh, shitloads. <laughs> oh my god. And you're just a friend now? We just got a big friendly rabbit. Okay. I mean, we can use it as an attack animal. <laughs> well, I did bring this up a few episodes, right? That uh, in the, the Empire will always have weird pets. Like, for example, you get a quest and they'll be like, oh, you got to look after my giant pelican. Or like we had in this series, a fish that has blood rot that you have to defend. I think a giant rabbit that, that we could give to Slush as a pet makes perfect sense. Now, he's not really good at handling or training animals. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll see how it goes. Can we even make him... Can we even train it? Oh, he's too terrible. Okay, well, you know what? It's his pet... In, in spirit, in name. But like most rich people, he'll give it to someone else to deal with. You know, like their children. <laughs> Matron, will father be joining us this year for Christmas? Not this year, little Timmy. You haven't been a good enough boy at boarding school. Uh, except it's a giant rabbit. It's a giant rabbit that... Oh, oh, oh you said two animals? Oh, flak armor. Huh? That's nice. Uh, sorry, more importantly, forget about the flak armor and its standing army to actually defend this base at once. What about the rabbit? What about the rabbit? Oh, I do have you training the rabbit. That's fine. That's good. Don't worry, it's very difficult to keep up with the work tab these days, because, uh, you know, when we actually call in a bunch of laborers, like I could do uh, right now, in fact, when you do that, it's very difficult to keep track of everything you might have noticed. <laughs> oh, why did I do that? <laughs> sure, there's something we can get you people to do, like deep drills. Uh, we've got a lot of deep drills. I could just reinstall them and have them. I could just have there's so much steel. This is the best day of my life. Go get that steel. Let's reinstall that. We don't need so many stone bricks anymore. I think it's very unnecessary. In fact, how many do we have? Uh, 680. Yeah, we're good for the timing. That one's already got something. Um, we'll put some on uranium and some on gold. And then with that uranium and gold and steel, we can make... Uh, that's right. Something made of metal. <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought. Prestige armor. We can make prestige armor. We do need the solar panels just to kickstart this because I really don't fancy connect it all up to the power grid. Where did the other one go? Hello? 
There you are, little drill. Right, let's put you there. And then we'll, we'll probably throw up a wall around them just so the enemies don't go and kick it down for a laugh. Because they're very mean like that. Let's make that a blueprint. Sod it. Because it's really the only one we've got to keep our economy going besides those those work camps that we've got out there in the world. But those take ages to get by. Uh, I say work camps. They're, they're literally imperial cities with imperial people. I mean, it sounds a lot worse than it is. I'm not Jeff Bezos. Come on now. We're, we're far more reasonable than that. Uh, there you go. Perfect. All right. Is there anything else we want? Um, we've got the steel set up. Oh, hang on. Oh, maybe a little bit like that. And then I think I'll probably just go as far to say crank up drilling for everybody. If we just put it at two for everybody across the board and then take it away for the important people who would never dare be seen dead near a deep drill, like Eric and Slush and Guardian East. I think our Janissaries, obviously we've only got Mo for the time being, I think they're too good to be on deep drills as well. We could have them guarding the base. I wonder if Optimus Prime needs a pen or whether or not we can we can just put him in the bestower's house. Oh my god, that is fantastic. It is a giant, obnoxious, very impractical pet. Growing zone. I've never played this game before. I'm sorry. I don't know what buttons I'm pressing. And now that we've got a spare room. Oh, this is so good. We can give Optimus Prime his own dedicated bedroom. This is a kind gift. Uh, animal sleeping box. Uh, honestly, is that going to be big enough? Um... <laughs> I mean, I'm no mathematician, but um, I'm starting to think that might be a little bit too small. Oh, this is very important. Do we have any artwork for the rabbit's room? We've got one normal. We've got one masterwork. The rabbit will be pleased. The rabbit will be pleased. I will call you Duke Optimus from now on. Wait, what rank is Slush? You're a Duke. What's below Duke? Remind me. Uh, Baron. B I, I don't even care if that's not directly below it. Baron Optimus. My friend, you wanted an esoteric, nonsensical pet? How about a 12 foot tall rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> Once we get the ball rolling, everything will be fine. People need to not panic so much. Everybody chill out, okay? You're stressing me out. Modern day furniture that focuses on practicality over beauty? What about this base focuses on... I mean, well, either of that. <laughs> to be honest, I thought that was an enemy then. I thought it was an enemy. It was just a squirrel. So instead of uh, building modern furniture and all that garbage, first things first, Baron Optimus, this is yours. Uh, what we're instead going to do is we're going to focus on non-practical furniture. By which I mean a solid gold bedroom for slush. I think that could be quite good. Uh, I want a royal dresser, if you don't mind, and maybe a royal end table too. Oh. Or neither. Why can I... What? Why can I not build... We want a royal bed, but not royal furniture? Why? Wait, wait, a royal bed's not artisan furniture. Artisan furniture. Oh. Well, that's bizarre. Okay, well, obviously we've got to... Oh, obviously we've got to do that first. Forget about your rifles and the things that allow us to survive. Slush needs a gold bedroom. Oh, it's a, it's a golden four-poster bed. Oh, of course. Not one of those... Oh, not one of those basic peasant gold lined beds that slush has right now no 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 you have to think bigger and better and everything about slush is bigger and better everything about slush is bigger and better and now that we've got two dedicated researchers in the form of mo and rarity these guys are gonna knock out in no time at all where's our um oh, under the confined bedroom oh because we're waiting on that freaking piano where is uh where's our applicant how long does it take rented recruitment website maybe i missed the notification contact customer support maybe i should hello Send a written complaint. Thank you. We'll look into it. Oh. It's like... Oh, there they are. Oh, well, that was easy. No, that's unrealistic. Complaining to customer support never works. Hello there. Um, How do we do this? Rented applicants. Oh, it just pops up. Oh, it's a rabbit. I never considered that you could potentially get aliens, even if you have aliens set to disliked. Um, a rabbit child soldier turned major company employee. Psychically hypersensitive, neat freak, incapable of artistic, good at shooting a medical. Uh, declined. Thank you. I'm glad that was a bloody free applicant. What is that? We got a notification about raiders? Um, they're not here to fight us, they're here to fight one another. A group of pirates from Bucko's Pirates and a group of Umpa Lumpas from Cringe's Chocolate Factory have arrived to fight fiercely. Their target is not you. <laughs> That is a fight I have got to see. Oompa Lumpas versus pirates. That that's that's a piece of art. That's glorious. Maybe we'll just get up. Maybe we'll just get Maxima to scope it out. Just make sure they're not going to go anywhere near our base. That, that fucking squirrel gets me every time. I keep thinking it's an enemy because it looks like a red dot at this distance. It's just a friendly little squirrel. Friendly little squirrel and his good friend Inspector Chicken. Although, what's that? Did you see that as well? There's something a little bit weird about 
We got old Inspector Chicken there. Oh, Inspector Chicken. I should have guessed it was you all along. Everybody say thank you to Lynx over on Discord who made us a real Inspector Chicken. A real Inspector Chicken with go go gadget cameras. <laughs> Do I still have to feed it rice? Oh, uh, Baron Optimus. What in the sweet hell are you doing? What what in the sweet hell are you doing? A uh, Baron Optimus. No! No! Baron Optimus! <laughs> oh, they can't do this! My my poor sweet boy! D send them in. Oh, this is vengeance. This is vengeance. Send them in. Oh, God. Now the base is on fire. Where did that explode? Was it somewhere bad? Uh, no, it was just all of our power grid. <laughs> That's fine. That's manageable. Don't worry about it. Think you can come in here and shoot the Duke's pet? <laughs> oh, you think this is a game? I mean, it is, but that's not the point. Uh, troopers? Counterfracts? I have a job for you. It is vengeance. Vengeance on behalf of the Baron. I'm gonna send Moen. Try and scout it out a little bit more. Oh, kill them all. Oh, kill them all. Wait, who the hell are these people? These are Bucko's pirates. Oh, it's only Bucko's pirates up here. Oh, shit. The fact that they're annihilating these Imperial Cataphracts and Troopers is... Oh, mo, 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 Whoa, shit, they can reach far. Ooh! You've angered Bucko's pirates, they now list you as your target. They cast the first stone when they shot Baron Optimus. Well, this will not go unanswered. Oh, God, Maxima, do I have a mission for you? I think we're probably safe to go out there and grab him at this stage. But, you know, what? we'll leave Guardian Easter out here as, as reinforcements. Eric, get out of there. The quest to save Baron Optimus. The... Hello? The question is what happens to the Lumpers now that we've defeated their enemy? Pirates from Bucko's Pirates are fleeing. Have we now got to deal with the Lumpers? Oh, God. The Oompa Lumpers of Quintus Chocolate Factory are preparing to slaughter the remnants of Bucko's Pirates. <laughs> they take no prisoners. Those Lumpers are lethal. Baron Optimus. Baron Optimus, stand again. Rise, my friend. And the Umpas of Cringe's Chocolate Factory are collecting trophies and leaving contentedly. Well, that's nice. That's nice. I'm glad they had a good time while they were here. Don't visit again. Live, damn you, Optimus. Live. Live, damn you. He's fine. Well, he's actually fine. Imperials are fleeing. No, no, no. Oh, I don't like that. What do you mean, Imperials are fleeing? Oh, shit. Um, get the Baron out of there. What do, you, what do you mean they're fleeing? Why are they fleeing? Someone died over here and now they're leaving? Oh, I'll leave the rabbit on the floor. Uh, Guardian Easter, rescue Baron Optimus. Let's patch up this Imperial. He, he's a fellow Imperial. I'm not just going to leave him on the, in, in, the, in the snow to bleed out. I mean, yes, I did prioritize a big rabbit above him. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Baron Optimus is no longer incapable of walking. Oh, and it's actually got an area that's showing up now. I wonder if it was trying to leave the map to go back to its... To go back to its home. What about Mo the Janissary? You want to patch him up, though? Oh, I mean, granted, she was on a very important rescue mission for poor sweet Baron Optimus. What do we have there? Is that a Stones King land? Oh, that was the one I bought that I was going to give to Slush, but then it would lower his beauty. And, of course, Slush is the most beautiful man that can ever be in the colony. That's Imperial Decree. Let me check the rules and see if we can give a Stones King land to Janissaries. Because I think Mo has earned it at this point. For his sacrifice in saving Baron Optimus, he will be rewarded. Uh, they're allowed tough skin glands, but not stone skin. That is unfortunate. Oh, but they are allowed circadian assistance. You will gain a gift, Mo. And if we're going to have Mo as a, a, a colony guard, somebody defending this place, someone being being awake at all times, someone who doesn't need so much rest, is only a benefit to our people. And it is a, a reward, a gift from Slush. And by scrounging up every piece of steel on the map, look at this. We have ourselves a deep drill. By which I mean all the drop pods that the people and stuff have been coming down and leave scrap behind. So I smelted all that down and we've got ourselves... Uh, oh, we've got another one set up. <gasps> He's just started on it. Well, this is fantastic until the next raid turns up and smashes it all to pieces. <laughs> but until then, we're set. This is fantastic. What of the Baron? What news of the Baron? Is he safe? Is he healthy? Who the freaking hell shoots a rabbit in the jaw with a high-powered marksman rifle? We've got to fix this as well. This is ridiculous. This is the Baron. Finally, YouTuber Furniture and Rimworld. Strongly focused on aesthetic and beauty over practicality. Yes, okay, that is actually quite nice. And then we got bins. My god, the amount of times I've I've put bins back in this series. I'm sorry. Wooden dresser, 50 gold and 70 wood. If I'm not mistaken. What is it, like 750 gold? <laughs> you can't, you can't. You can't do that. <laughs> oh, but I can. Oh, but I can. But I shouldn't. I shouldn't. 
but I could. I'm not going to. I might. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Like, like, legitimately don't do it, though. That's ridiculous. I'm not spending four episodes setting up for us to get new people, only to then blow our entire budget on a solid gold royal dresser. I'll compromise, and I'll give him a royal poster bed. How about that? No, we do need that heater. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It would be more sensible. Wow, this is sweaty, Rimworld. Uh, it would be more sensible to build the bed and then reinstall it. Otherwise, they're not going to have anywhere to sleep and these things take ages. So let's build that there. How long is this going to take? 210 work. Wowie. Um, and then we could throw down a royal table in here too. Ooh. And then royal chairs. Ooh. We're going to blow the whole gold budget. We're going to blow the whole thing. Uh, what? Remedy complaint response. After a thorough investigation into your written complaint, our research led to the conclusion that your issue has been resolved without your consent. I apologize for the inconvenience. Have a good life, Mr. Fluffles. Customer service, Muffalo team lead. Thank you, Mr. Fluffles. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm afraid your package has been lost, and no, we won't be issuing a refund. If I was slush, I would be very concerned about my heir apparent and apprentice building my solid gold house. I think he might get a little jealous. How can we ensure his loyalty? Well, I mean, if he gets out of hand, we just accuse him. We just accuse him and then we execute him. I mean, Slush has all the power here. He holds all the cards. And in very uh, traditional channel style, I mentioned a fantastic idea many episodes ago and then proceeded to never, ever do it. <laughs> because this is the rare situation where the Empire and our colony shares the same idea religion, all of these people that we call in are capable of joining our rituals. That means that if we've got a fair, if we've got a leader speech, all those extra people are going to make it way more likely to succeed. So let's have ourselves an Imperial Fair. Look at that, 100%. 100% expected quality, of which 20% of that, of course, will make it unforgettable because everybody can join in. Is there anywhere anywhere else we can improve it? Um, this one doesn't take quality into account. 18 participants, though. That's absolutely gigantic. Look at them all. We're kind of at the point now where we don't need mood boost. Oh, there are only heaters in there. Oh, it's minus five. Are you going to die of hypothermia at a party? Uh, Cat girl, you're really going to ruin the mood. <laughs> uh, the cat girl just said, do you know how much it costs to take care of a wog? Well, it costs an arm and a leg, which is obviously a very funny joke normally, uh, except she might be <laughs> speaking from experience. <laughs> I love that we've just got her around as, as a trophy at this point. Actually incapable of manipulation, just here for a laugh. Come on. Hey, fun Imperial Fair. Plus five mood. That's actually not bad. We can have a leader speech while everyone is here. Just as long as she doesn't collapse with hypothermia, but this one's pretty fast. Slosh discussed the mind as a scimitar. Wow. And Slosh would know a lot about long, curved weapons. And big basins? <laughs> Sorry, I was, um... I was just checking to see if the leader speech actually had any impact, and I kind of noticed there is the modifier almost destroyed the bedroom. Had some passionate loving, things like that keep our relationship interesting. Sorry? Oh, is that because of the love enhancer? Well, that's... I've never seen that before. <laughs> which which mod adds that? Sorry. I mean, the moods right now are so goddamn good. Everybody is in solid green besides the cat girl who's missing... Well, the other half of, her, <laughs> of the cat girl and then the temporary workers. Everybody else is just on cloud nine. They've had the best days of their life. And uh, let's go ahead and get... Oh, 25 gold refunded. Oh, that was definitely worth it. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Ooh, little Maxima is idle. That means that we could finally set up some patrols. That seems like a pretty good idea. How does this work, then? We set up a patrol. Um, we'll go fine. Black patrol seems fine. And then we just... Oh. Respect space to remove the last waypoint. Press delete to remove the patrol. Gotcha. Um, so we just say... I, I, what do I want to, to patrol? Maybe just this kind of outside wall? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's easy. Wowee. Okay, we'll do something like that. That seems good. And then have a patrol patrol back. I, maybe she'll do it automatically. I'm not sure, but why not? And then we do, we do that. And then, uh, just stop. Is that it? Oh, maybe if you press the patrol button. Ah, moving. There you go. Oh, fantastic. Well, it was that easy. Oh, look at that. And now she's going to run back and forth out the front gate and make sure nobody comes in. And then if she does get a more important job to do... Bear in mind, I put guard right at the bottom there. If she has some building to do or whatever else, she'll pop back out and uh, and carry on with her day-to-day -day life. Even Choco Mint being forced to work in the Imperial Manufactory all day, every day, is having the best time of her life. I would say we're the good guys. 
We've done a nice thing here. And there go our laborers already, but we are 1,100 steel richer, so I really cannot complain. Thank you, Inspector Chicken. Gotta make sure they get to their shuttle safely, after all. Thank you, and goodbye. And more importantly, where the hell are all the raiders? I sure hope that giant faction award didn't... <laughs> didn't break everything. I would really love some more miners to be able to send out there into the world to get us some more... Some more gold. Can't hold on much longer. You can stop playing chess whenever you like. I'd like to clarify that. Nobody's forcing you to play chef, Amphiamis. Chef? My name is Chef. Oh, what the hell was that? What was something making my screen shake very violently? What's going on over here? We actually can't tell. Horrifying. There's something in the darkness. Oh, it's Lumpers. Is that Lumper with a cleaver destroying all my turrets? My god, how powerful are they now? Luciferium. <laughs> <laughs> Manipulation, 227%. Oh, wow. Uh, they're still compressed down the same as they were before. So it hasn't got any harder quite yet, which is which is great. I actually worry that Maximum might not be able to deal with that. Maximum, why are you so slow these days? Is it just the stone skin gland? We need to get some bionic legs. Let's see if we can swap those out eventually. Maybe a little bionic spine too. Anything that, of course, she's allowed to have by Imperial Decree. Mo feels... You see that? Does it feel safe because there's a guard nearby? Saw a guard times two. I've seen a guard I feel safe. Oh, that's horribly easy to abuse. I could just mark everybody as a guard, right? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Man, these lumpers are kind of making me a little afraid for Maxima. Oh, I mean, one cleaver-wielding shielded lumper versus Catapract with a monosword. <laughs> ah! Nah, let's crash the game. Why did, why did it pause? Don't do that. We're good. Oh my god, and she hit melee 16. What a legend. Uh, they are on the base, though. Janissaries? I mean, no pressure here, but head over. Um, oh, it's Elwide. Why do we not have you any army yet? It's because Chocobin's still working on the freaking piano. I genuinely forced work on that probably uh, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> How long have you been there? Food and rest almost at zero. Well, I mean, she's in a good mood, though. She's like unshakable. Well, that's nice. Who needs all those trivial things like food and rest when you have an inspiring speech from the one and only Slush Creamer is about to get a tough shot? Slush. You know what? These aren't beyond Slush's power. Slush has a lot of power and I've been too afraid to use him. Mainly because I know what might happen. We're gonna, we're gonna drive that one berserk and then we're gonna burden his friend so that they are forced to fight. For Slush's sick amusement. Yes. Yes! Then why don't we even the odds there for our little fighter, Gora? Give him a vertical pulse. Make him both vomit. Slush is a sick, sick, twisted man. <laughs> yeah, but like, kill him though. Thank you. That was fantastic. Slush held that down there. Give yourself a round of applause. Take another week off. You deserve it. What have you got? Plants nine. Medical nine. Melee eight. Um... Industrious Neurotic is, is such a nice combination because it's 55% global work speed bonus. <laughs> I might have to, I might have to take you. I'm sorry. Hang on, you got shot in the kidney and you're just like, fine though. Oh, it's okay. His his kidney was only crushed by feral, feral pistols. It's okay. He's fine. He'll walk it off. What about you? Gora, you've lost an arm and a leg. That's unfortunate. Creepy breathing pessimist fragile. Well, not as unfortunate as, uh, as this, my friend. Not as unfortunate as this. I hate the fact that she has a smile on her face as she's doing that. You are a monster. You are an absolute monster. You might be thinking stripping for the flak helmet. We're not actually allowed to wear flak helmets. No Imperial troops wear flak helmets. Very bizarre. And as per usual, we get them converted to see the light of the Emperor, and then after that, we'll enslave them. I, I completely forgot that we hadn't had a Lumper. We had the Dragon Girl. Obviously, we've sent her off to one of our settlements. We've got the we've got the Ice Cream Girl. We've got the Cat Girl. A Lumper was, I think, the only one for our alien collection that we didn't have. And I'm really glad I mined up that 1,200 steel, because now we can spend it all rebuilding worthless, worthless turrets. <laughs> Choco Mint, you've finally done it, you legend. A piano. It's only good quality, but that's okay. Um, Where are we going to put it? Uh, I, I guess I could install it here. That seems like the sensible place, but I filled it with a bunch of miscellaneous crap. Brilliant. Um... I guess we'll put that there and that there. And then let's remove the pillar on that side so that our workers can actually get to it, I suppose. Bins! I've never been so happy to see bins. What's next? Oh, guns. Oh, great. Yeah, worthless guns. <laughs> I feel like my priorities have been slightly wrong. No, they have not. This is an Empire series. An esoteric, weird, drug-addled, animal-handling faction. We've done it perfectly. Everything has been in the right order. Bins, bins, bins. Here we are. 
Um, I mean, maybe a large bin? Where would I hide it? Somewhere where you won't see. Ah, it seems like a good idea. Yeah, that's pretty good. That covers pretty much all of that. And let's throw it down a regular plano. Oh, steel? Can we make out something else? Limestone bin. Wow, that must be really inconvenient to empty. Uh, we'll put that there. That seems pretty good. Maybe for the bestower's house, a bin made of solid gold? How much would that be? 900. Well, we'll wait till the next delivery. Maybe I'll swap it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's because they've got... Ah, oh, okay, so so this guy's got an infection. I couldn't quite figure out why. I mean, obviously, he's been hit there by feral pistols, but it was just a crack. It was just a break in the bone. He's got a bloody flesh-crafted arm, but he's not a flesh-crafting ideologian. So it'll just keep getting infected. Uh, let's pull that arm off. Hey, g uh, give me that arm. Uh, don't worry, Dr. Maximum will see you now, and she is fantastic at removing arms. Just ask the cat girl. <laughs> Although saying that, I don't think she's got a jaw, so she probably wouldn't be able to explain it. Okay, there we are. Good as new? Good as new. See, you're fine. Hear me out. Let's move stone cutting, cleaning, mining, drilling up to priority three. And then we give... Because uh, we haven't got many of those, right? Then we make training priority four and guarding priority three. So that way they can guard, they can do the patrol route. But if it's already being patrolled, then they go and get some training in instead rather than being, th than being idle. Oh my god. Sweet, precious Baron Optimus. What are we training him in? Um, apparently attack. <laughs> of course we are. Yeah. I, I don't ever want him to be out there fighting, if I'm going to be honest with you. He's already proven that he's not really much of a combat character. Paid some blocker. Ooh, that could be dangerous. Is it on behalf of the Emperor? Or on behalf of the Empire? Anyway, a Countess. Eight honor. We would game for that. A potential ally. Now, with the 8 honor, remember, we could always try and get Guardian Easter up to... Uh, she needs to be Freeholder, right? Before we turn it into a uh, Cataphract. Cataphract is what I'm after. But you know what? Fine. You know what? I'll give it to Guardian Easter. Get her more... I mean, if we get her a higher rank, obviously, she can use more... Um, yes. Permits. <laughs> That's the one I was thinking of. Put your honor right in my mouth, Countess. Uh, let's go for... Uh, Eric's a Freeholder. I mean, getting Eric more Psy powers, eventually we'll be able to make Psy formers if we ever finally get that bloody tech print. Give it to Guardian Easter. So there is two manhunt... Oh, wait, that's not donkeys. That's donkits. Well, I read that as donkeys. What the hell is a donkit? Oh, shit. I hope it's not some giant horrifying monster. Uh, it's a rabbit. Of course it would be a rabbit. Everything in this game is weird rabbits. Of course, I've sent the mightiest of Imperial entourages. I've sent Baron Optimus and Maxima to deal with this this rabbit infestation. Rabbits trying to block the sun to kill our colony. <laughs> Bit of an easy fight for Maxima. Well, there you have it. That was an easy Imperial role for Guardian Easter. Way easier than looking after a bloody prisoner for the best part of the month. What do we get from that? A little bit of steel. I do like to see some steel, some components, some plast steel. Turns out Baron Optimus can also carry 151 kilograms. What a guy. So that way, when we do actually want to go out there and raid some, say, steel mining site, which I think Maximum could probably solo, we could go out there with the rabbit and make off like bandits. Big Imperial rabbit riding bandits. And that means that Guardian Easter not only is now permitted to become a cataphract, which is great news, not such good news for uh, Choco Mint, who's going to be non-stop making armor again. How close are we to more recon gear? We just need the plasteel at this stage, huh? But at least in the meantime, we can now say uh, food drop. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Oh, good. Oh, and now we can make guns that aren't just pistols. This colony is really taking off. We've got luxuries. We've got giant esoteric rabbits. We've got actual weapons and armor now. I've tuned the deep drill to plasteel this time, so we should be able to get a nice income of plasteel. That's using that uh, advanced ground penetrating scanner mod, which I like quite a lot, because it means you're not at the whim of whatever random resource you get. If you're playing even slightly modded, you get salt after salt after salt. And even though we're not using modded items this time, of course, we are still in a world where there are modded items, all these player factions using it. So if we don't use that mod, we'll get all sorts of uh, Korean rabbit items. And you know what? That wasn't in terrible timing. The power only just went out as well because Maximum was out there and back in no time at all. To be fair, I mean, it did spawn in what? Like bear? It wasn't that difficult. Imperial Trader. Artificial metabolism, damn it. I don't need artificial metabolism. You want to buy some, uh, you want some robes and shit, though? Well, we've got plenty of those. You guys want some of that? How about some sculptures? There you go. Wow, hey, we're, we're actually making a good amount of money just from our own little ventures here, too. Plasteel. Plasteel, plasteel, plasteel. Neurocalculator. Coagulator. 
Okay, sure. So maybe we could just, even if we can't craft it, we can still buy some stuff here to use. A legendary crown. Oh. Oh, but we need to be saving the money for recruits. But also, I do love gold. And Slush loves gold. We could trade gold for gold. We could sell a little bit of our gold in exchange for their gold. Because we've got a lot of gold and the whole point of this gold was to sell the gold anyway, right? We don't need that much gold. And instead, we've got Janissaries. I can buy them some bloody charge rifles. Like Malcolm the Charge Rifle. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. What does it do? Jealous? Comes angry when the bond of individual uses another weapon. That's fine. Kill focus will instantly grant the world a 20 psi focus. Oh, shit. Well, I mean, Maxima is, um... I, I forget what rank she is, but she can use psi powers. Because she's, uh, uh, she's, uh... She's a knight, right? Oh, crap. I mean, that could be incredible, but she's a melee character. What about Guardian Easter? She's a defender. She's got her first rank there. We can do a bestowing ceremony, and then we give her Malcolm. <laughs> You're going with me, Malcolm. Let's buy that charge LMG, too. I'll sell a little bit more gold for that, because we do have Janissaries that can use it. Um, I mean, yes, that is strictly a modded item. Technically a modded item. And as I said before, certain characters will allow a little flexibility on. The elite members of the colony get a little flexibility. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's vanilla expanded. It's basically just... It's basically just the base game, isn't it? It's just vanilla. Wow, wasn't that a fun and great episode? No, I can't show you what was happening in the colony before I cut to this end screen, because that would be spoilers. Thank you in the meantime to our executive producer patrons for allowing this series to exist in the first place, and more importantly for allowing me to mispronounce their names, including Amir Brakic, Luna Wolf, Akrana, Mithrin, Magondi, Vincent E. Moose, Nick Nack, Alvin Flang, David A. Reinhardt, Azarami, Fluffy Prawn, Catlord, Gazoose, Kane GB, Sir Royland, Chase, Kira, and Alexander Roosh for their support. Uh, the executive producer is over on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you for allowing this channel to exist. Thank you for being a part of this strange experience. What a bizarre episode this was, I'm sure, because I definitely remember it. You'll find out why tomorrow. Thank you to Shane Riley, an angry crab, Flight Gamer, Berbermancer, Gina DeFranco, Melvin Groendahl, Mr. Chakote, Wargaming Dad, Fluff, Atreus Sen, Voidless, Heck, Darkness, Ben Ice Cream, and Nightasm as well. See you all tomorrow. Ooh.